in four, in three, Deseb is ready to go, in two, in one, and in zero. Mark a cue if you are Jahari, mark a cue if you are Nayana. Raise your hand if we assigned you a teacher yesterday. Deja, mark a responsible T. Delana, mark a responsible T. Perfect appearance. Deja, what number are you going to do, sweetie? Four. Excellent. So that means you're going to do... Perfect. Brianna, mark a responsible I. Thanks for being ready. Yeah, we're ready to go, sweetie. Two minutes. If you finish, start reading, please. Number one and two, that goes back to, remember that possessive noun lesson we did about when someone owns something and they need an apostrophe after it? So think back to the lesson. So it's singular is one, plural is more than one. So for number one and two, is it one or is it more than one? Is the apostrophe after the S one baby? So your goal is not to change the apostrophe. The apostrophe is already correct. Yeah, but it's just to say is tooth's color referring to one tooth or more than one. So just take a guess. We'll go over it. Do your best. We'll go over it in a sec. About 10 more seconds. Good afternoon, reading, reading phenomenons. It's wonderful to see you today, as always. Please mark a responsible eye for an incredibly focused do now. We're going to start with our word work, and then we're going to move into our B, C, R's. Okay, so remember tickets for quality answers, complete sentences. Same with quality questions or comments that you have to incorrect answers. Ms. Savannah, start us off. Singular or plural possessives? Oh, possessives. Possessive. Yeah. One tooth, toothpaste. I can't, I can't. So the first one is tooth's color, repeat it after me. Oh. Mm. Tooth's color. Tooth's color, repeat it after me. Tooth's color. So we learned, when we learned singular possessives, that if we have one thing, and we're talking about something it owns, from our your eyes are up here, there's apostrophe after the singular word. So this is just referring to one tooth and what color it is. Okay? So one tooth and its color means it's singular. It's what? Singular. It's singular. It's what? Singular. It's singular. It's what? Singular. Thank you for 100% in this corner. Okay, so try number two, and then we'll answer questions, because I know this is some of this is new. Jahari? A baby cries. Are you sure it's baby cries? Babies cries. Okay, so the baby's cries in the nursery <laughs> are really loud. Why is that plural? Why is that plural? Ramaro? It's plural because it's more than one and because and be, it's plural because it's more than one 
am. Saying, How do you know babies are more than one in that sentence? Babies, because if you say babies, has an S in it. Like, if you say baby, that's one. If you say babies, that's two. Exactly. It has the baby, i.e. S on the end. So even if you didn't know how to write apostrophes for plurals, because we haven't learned that yet in writing class, you could see the IES and you know that's more than one. Yes. How do you spell one baby? How do you spell one baby? Brianna? B-A-B-Y or B-A-B-I-E. B-A-B-I-E? Mm -hmm. If you're country. No, the correct <laughs> official way you spell it for English grammar is you spell it B-A. B-A-Y. B-A. Yeah. B-A-B-Y. Say it again. B-A-B-Y. Give her two steps on two, ready, one, two. Two steps on two, ready, one, two. Okay, and move us on to number three. Number three. Thank you, Miss Monet. Circle the correct spelling of the following word. I said that um, for number three, I put the first letter of the following word. Agree, disagree, one, two, three. Perfecto, my dear. Let's track our teachers. We have Miss Tucker for number one. Thank I you, Samantha. I got two brothers and one brother. Well, I got two sisters and one brother in my family. I capitalized the I, and then two was spelled wrong, so I spelled it T W O, and one was spelled wrong, and I spelled it O N E, and then I put a period. She made every change and got it all correct. Agree, disagree, and one, two, three. So I hear a little bit mixed. I see a lot she did well. Comments and feedback. Savannah. This is, I got two sisters. I have two sisters. That would be the more proper way to say it. Excellent, yeah. Savannah, for changing that. What, what part of speech is have? Is that a verb? Is that a noun? Is it an adjective? Present. No, no. It is present tense. <laughs> so if it's present uh -oh. tense, it must be a? A verb. I mean, a verb. I mean, a verb. <laughs> so have is a what, Savannah? Verb. Perfect. Stop right there. Uh, anything else? Hold it back up, Deja. You had more feedback? Ramara? Um, you, uh, I think you must put a period after sisters. She so, No. So the sentence reads, I have two sisters and one brother in my family. It's one complete sentence. It looks good. But good try. Uh, Jahari? Uh, did you add your punctuality? Did she, punctuality is when you're on time at school. How do we say that in our writing? I mean, uh, punctuation. Punctuation, excellent. Did she okay. add punctuation? You tell us. Uh... Yes, but couldn't she like put a comma? Not even. I don't think so, because it's like saying I have two pairs of brown shoes and two pairs of red shoes. Like it's just, it's not necessarily a list, it's just all together. I have two sisters, put a comma, brother, and my family. Excellent. Final comment, Jade, then we're moving on to Delano. Could, could you explain that again? Because I didn't get that. Why, there isn't a comma? No, when y'all said a comma, sister, something. I said, I, I said, I said, comma, I get that. I said, comma, because, uh, I said comma because... Um, well, Jahari, I'm going to pause you just so we can move on to Delano. So typically in our writing, we're going to use a comma in this kind of sentence if we're making a list. So I have two sisters, comma, a brother, comma, three cousins, comma, and a dog. But because we use the word and to connect, we don't need a comma. So the and, that conjunction, is what's allowing us to put those two things together. If it just said I have two sisters, one brother, a dog, you would need those commas to separate. And there's a lot of other uses we can talk about as we go forward. All right, give Miss Deja two snaps on two for doing a great job with feedback. Two snaps, ready, one, two. Please track Mr. Harris. He's going to show you what he did. Um, well, Ed and I are going to the grocery store so we can get pasta. He got everything correct. Agree, disagree, one, two, three. Ooh, I hear a lot of positivity over here, and I hear a couple pieces of feedback. Nayana? Um, you don't put Ed and I because if it was if it was only just you, it would be I are going to the grocery store so so I could get so I could get pasta and that doesn't make sense. So you would just keep it. You would just keep it. Um, Ed. You know I'm gonna pause you there. I see where you're going because you're thinking should it be I or me? But here's the thing: if we say I am going to the store, we use am. However, if we say Nyana and I. We don't say Nyan and I am going to the store because that's more than one. We need to change the verb to are. So the way he's written it is correct. Ed and I are going to the store. We don't say me are going to the store um, either because me goes after the verb. Yes? Like, I was confused right this. So do I suppose to put 
so we can get pasta or or to get pasta is yeah. perfect that's that's correct in the sentence so that is totally fine anything else that you would add or change Brianna uh, he should put a comma Ed and I no I we don't need a comma in that sentence either Jahari his name it, it, I, uh, I remember off Ed and whatever his name is supposed to put an E-I-D instead of a so that would be that would be like saying um, if your name was really Jahar and someone said we have to change his name to Jahari and your name wasn't really Jahari or that's like for my name Katie if I said no Katie isn't right it has to be Catherine this is actually the person's name so we're gonna stick with it as it is so actually it looks perfect two claps for Jelena one two ready one two Ramara thanks for helping out work responsible for being a great teammate and Ramara go ahead and take your seat before we do our jobs before we do our supplies absolutely raise your hand if I missed you for a ticket Elena. Can you mark responsible S? And Your supplies? And Romaro about one too for helping. Excellent. You can pause. Alright, Mr. Romaro, lead us in our transition chant and then we'll do all our cleanup. We, we are, are the, the reading, reading phenomena, phenomena and, and we, we are, are the, the best, best Excellent. You can tell we practiced that. Okay. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're raffle box manager. Louise not here. Oh, that's right. Volunteer who does not have a job to do it for him. Sorry. Excellent. We're going to take one minute to transition. So make sure you're doing your job silently at this time. One minute. If you're seated, you may turn to page 26 for our read aloud. Oh, it is? Ronnie, could you make a responsible end? That's so honest of you. Would you do more? Excuse me. He was trying to help you out. Just I never did. Did you do that answer? You did that answer. You answered something in the beginning, I think. Oh, yeah. I think that one was yours. You can bring him on. Got about 25 seconds left for Mara, Mark Responsible Eye. For Mara, will you lead us and turn to page 26, sweetie? Yes, I will. Do you see? Your page for today is already on your board. We're ready to go. About 10 seconds left. Page 26. Page 26. You're there when the timer goes off. Ooh, you're going to get a bonus dollar. Look at that. Here it goes. Mark Responsible T, if I call your name, Nyan. Deja Marker T and R, she's on her page. Marker T and R, Savannah, Jade, Brianna, Delano, Ramaro, Tahari, and Miss Monet. Just catch up with us if you don't mind, darling. All right, here you go, guys. All right, my fabulous phenomenons. Phenomenons. Here we go. On page 26, we are going to do a quick read aloud because a couple students did not get caught up to the part of the story where our BCR question ends. So let me remind you why we're reading right now, what our purpose is, and let me remind you what our goal is going to be for our independent work today. So thank you for tracking me in such a lovely way, Deja and Jade. Thanks for giving me your eyes, Mr. Tahari. So our goal today is to have found all of the best evidence to answer our BCR question. Our BCR question, a volunteer to read our topic sentence we wrote that restated the question. You can read it on the planning page I put on your board, which I'm going to tell you more about in a second. Thank you, Savannah. This is what James experiences when he enters the peach for the first time. So you started collecting a lot of evidence. And in front of you, I have listed all of the possible evidence that you could have collected and I saw around your clipboards yesterday. Not everyone got to the end of our reading, so I want to make sure that everyone is on the same page before we move forward. But we need to move forward today because I want to teach you the <coughs> skill of how you select the best in order to write your BCR. And I was looking with Miss Reed and Miss King at your BCRs yesterday from interim four. And I'm really excited because I saw some really great things that Savannah can do to get a three, that Jahari can do to get at least a two or a three, that Nayana can do to get a three. There were so many things that I saw around the room that I want to push you on so you can get to proficient or advanced. Okay? So getting your mind and thinking about what he did and what he experienced. And then I'll explain what's in front of you and what we're going to do with it today. 
I'm going to start on chapter 26, and I'm going to read about two and a half pages, starting with James' large frightened eyes. What is he experiencing in this moment? James' large frightened eyes traveled slowly around the room. The creatures, some sitting in chairs, others reclining on a sofa, were all watching him intently. Creatures? Or were they insects? An insect is usually something rather small, is it not? A grasshopper, for example, is an insect. So what would you call it if you saw a grasshopper as large as a dog, as large as a large dog? You could hardly call that an insect, could you? There was an old green grasshopper as large as a large dog sitting on a stool directly across the room from James now. And next to the old green grasshopper, there was an enormous spider. And next to the spider, there was a giant ladybug with nine black spots on her scarlet shell. Each of these three was squatting upon a magnificent chair. On a sofa nearby, reclining comfortably in a curled up position, there was a centipede and an earthworm. On the floor over in the far corner, there was something thick and white that looked as though it might be a silkworm. But it was sleeping soundly and nobody was paying any attention to it. Each of these creatures was at least as big as James himself. And in his strange greenish light that shone down from somewhere in the ceiling, they were absolutely <coughs> terrifying to behold. Stop. Find on the planning page in front of you. Find one, two, three, four, five, the fifth, the fifth item that I wrote where it says James sees. And could you read James sees and the next James. piece of evidence that I wrote? Because this is exactly what we're reading. This is what I was jotting as I was reading this. Think about how he was experiencing this as you listen. Jade, go ahead. James sees. James sees enormous life-size insects. He is scared. And keep reading. Now. One more, yes. James discovers that the creatures can talk and thinks they want to eat them. So this is some of the evidence I saw when you were doing this yesterday. And if you didn't get to that, I want you to recognize that this is evidence of what he experienced. I'm hungry, the spider announced suddenly, staring hard at James. I'm famished, the old green grasshopper said. So am I, the ladybug cried. The centipede sat up a little straighter on the sofa. Everyone's famished, he said. We need food. Four pairs of round, black, glassy eyes were all fixed upon James. The centipede made a rig wriggling movement with his body, as though he were about to slide off the sofa, but he didn't. There was a long pause and a long silence. The spider who happened to be a female spider, opened her <coughs> mouth and ran a long black tongue delicately over her lips. Aren't you hungry? She said suddenly, leaning forward and addressing herself to James. Poor James was backed up against the far wall, shivering with fright and much too terrified to answer. What's the matter with you? The old green grasshopper said. You look positively ill. So that is the part where I jotted that he was completely scared of the creatures. Last couple experiences on page 30. Final page for our read aloud. He looks as though he's going to faint any second, the centipede said. Oh my goodness, the poor thing, the ladybug cried. I do believe he thinks it's him we are wanting to eat. There was a roar of laughter from all sides. Oh dear, oh dear, they said. What an awful thought. You mustn't be frightened, the ladybug said kindly. We wouldn't dream of hurting you. You are one of us now. Didn't you know that? You are one of the crew. We're all in the same boat. We've been waiting for you all day long, the old green grasshopper said. We thought you were never going to turn up. I'm glad you made it. So cheer up, my boy, cheer up, said Pete said. And meanwhile, I wish you'd come over here and give me a hand with these boots. It takes me hours to get them all off by myself. Whoa. Before we summarize our evidence, well, why does centipede take hours to take his boots off. Who can make an inference? He says it takes hours. I have just, oh, can't do it alone. Uh, Delano. Um, because you probably need help. No, no. What do we know about centipedes? They got a thousand legs. Oh, centipedes have a thousand legs? A hundred legs. So, why would it take him hours to take his boots off? Because he has to grab his boot with every single Exactly. Give two snaps on two. Ready? One, two. Okay. So now find the page in front of you. You can close your book and take a pause. You can mark a responsible hour for fabulous listening. 
I want us to zoom in on all of the things that James experienced, stopping at that point, because that was his first experience. I want you to think about now what we have here. We have, if you look at this page, how many pieces of evidence would you say we probably have? Savannah? Nine. We have nine pieces of evidence. Ramaro or Nayana or Jahari, how many pieces of evidence do typically we want to include in our BCR? Would you say, uh, Mr. Ramar? Well, on the BCR, they ask you to, uh, to include at least three, but you want to above rising, so you want to go to like five or six. So I would actually say that your first point is the correct point. You want to include at least three, and here's why. Because when you're writing, I'm sorry, when you're reading, you want to actually show on a BCR that you've done the work of figuring out what the most important evidence is. A BCR isn't meant to be super, super long. They don't give you a huge box, right? They give you enough space to write a strong response. So today I want to teach you something called keep or toss, keep or toss, toss, toss or keep. keep or toss. Thank you. I want to show you how we select the best evidence. Sometimes, like in the passage you had on the interim with the man who turned into the horse, there was a lot of evidence of how he charmed and captured the girl in that story. So if you were writing it all down, you would have a lot like we do right now. So I want to show you the steps for this. This is something that I loved doing when I used to teach BCRs in writing, and I love that I can bring it back to you guys to help you. Okay, so we're going to go around the room. I want everyone to read a piece of evidence. I want you to be doing the following as you read. I want you to be thinking, is this the best answer for this question? Is this the best thing he experienced? Is, this, is there better evidence on here than this? And am I repeating something? Or is this connecting to something that we already said on this page? So now I'm going to start us off with James, and we're going to go all the way around, thinking about this evidence in front of us. James crossed through a tunnel of juicy peach flesh. James reaches the pit of the peach and, and discovers a door. James realized someone was waiting for him on the other side. The doorway disappears. James... See, no, no, that's that's her. James sees humongous life size insects. He is weird. James discovers that the creatures can talk and thinks they want to eat him. And this is all the stuff we just read. Go ahead, Jane. The creatures all start laughing as soon as they realize this. They tell him how he he's one of the crew. You're big. You. They have been waiting. Each of them start talking randomly to each other and James. Okay, so if we were to stop and we were to say, oh no, you know what, I'm just going to write my BCR and I'm going to use the first three, and I wrote them here so we could actually see them and I can show you this, the first three pieces of evidence. What I realize when I go back and I do these things and I say, does this really answer the question? I realize the first three things, him going into the peach, him discovering, I'm sorry, crawling inside, discovering a door, those things and realizing people are waiting even, those are, those are all discoveries he's making, but that does not account for later on when he's experiencing something else, which is fear. Because he starts by really discovering like this cool thing. He's like finding food in the peach. He's so excited. He hasn't eaten all day. But then as he continues along, it's starting to later not to be so fun and exciting because he realizes they're enormous creatures. And what's he thinking in his mind when he sees them? He's thinking what? He's thinking what? Go ahead. I'm about to get eaten. So oh, no. instead of being excited and surprised, he's feeling what? Surprised. Instead of being excited and surprised like he was here in the beginning when he was discovering, he's feeling what, Ramar? Scared. Scared. And then as we keep going, I notice this happens right here. The creatures start doing what? Laughing at James. And so I can imagine that being a climax of the story. Delano, I need your eyes. Peppa, please, sweetie, thank you so much. We're, oh, he's so relieved. And they finally tell him you're part of the group. So I see it looking like this, and please draw these brackets on your page too, because I need your help deciding which ones we're going to use. I see it as being three different sections. So the first two, the first experience he had of discovery, the second three, one, two, three, four, four, of him having complete fear, and then the last four, three exactly, are him having relief. 
and him thinking, oh my gosh. So what I need to do if I'm keeping or tossing yeah. is I need to keep only one from each part. And actually, Brianna, this often goes along with stories where we take one piece of evidence from the beginning and middle and end. Okay? So let's start at the beginning. I'm going to show you how I put this together, and I want you to think about how you do that on your paper. So James crawls through a tunnel of juicy, fleshy peach. James reaches the pit of the peach and discovers a door. I'm going to keep the first one. Please circle it with me. And I'm going to toss the second one. Because the first one is much more of a main idea of what he was doing. The second one is a detail. Sure, you can cross that however you want. So I have my one piece of evidence. Next couple, which one of these best shows that he's scared or do I need to make a combination? He realizes someone is waiting for him. The doorway disappears. He sees enormous life-size insects and he's scared. He discovers they can talk and they want to eat him. Which one best shows another experience he had inside the peach? And tell us why. Nayana? Number three, because it says that he sees these large insects, and I mean, anybody would get scared. And then it didn't even tell you that he got scared. So. It even tells you in the story that he's really terrified. Um, any disagreements with that? Deja? Uh, well, I think that you should combine them. Oh, why is that? Because it's, it's kind of like telling you another reason why he gets scared of the insects. So do I combine this with doorway or this with? You combine that with. And that they want to. Okay, so that's further proof. Okay, so let's, even though these are still good pieces of evidence, hold on one second. I really like what you said. Let's cross out, James realizes. Let's cross out the doorway disappears. Let's keep, he sees the enormous life side insects. And we can even add, can talk and think they can eat him. So that'll be the evidence that I want to make sure I include as my second piece of evidence. Questions about what we did? Savannah? I see why Deja did that because in both, and uh, James sees a, a what enormous life-size insects and he's scared. He's scared in that one and in the other thing. Exactly, he's scared in both. And you know what, that's a bigger, stronger statement of his experience. The, the doorway closing is a detail around that, but that's the biggest moment of experience he has. Okay, last three. Think about these. Creatures all start laughing. They tell him he's one of the crew, and they start randomly talking. Which one do you think we should keep? Turn and tell someone next to you. Um, two. I think two. Two. I think we got five, five, six, seven, it's only ten. Um, Which one should we keep? I think two. You can I think two. Why do you think two? It, it, Why is that a bigger experience for him than just them laughing? I heard a lot of students on this side of the table, so I'd love to hear someone over here give us their opinion. Which piece of evidence in the third section did you feel like would be the best to prove what he experienced? Monet. Thank you for supporting our responsibility. I said, I said number two would be, you know, you should, um, we would support it best because, well, you know what I mean. Um, so I said, explain in your words. So why is that one the best? I said it was the best because it says they told him how he's one of the crew. So, like, I mean, it just, you got the right feeling. So why is it better? To be told you're one of the crew, then for someone just to laugh at you and you be like, oh, okay. Why is that better? Tell me more. Jade? Because at first he was scared, and then, like, now they, like, try to tell him not to be scared no more. And they're not only saying, don't be scared, but you're, you're actually, we're going to be friends with you. You're going to be one of us. Anything else, Savannah? Let's go ahead and circle that as Savannah's commenting. I see that, I think that, like, they tell, I think when they say they laugh at as soon as that drink, I mean, that paragraph. Or statement. What you wanna say? I think that piece of evidence. Yeah, piece of evidence. You shouldn't really like pick that one because they could be laughing for really anything. Like it could either it's good, bad, or just just to be laughing. Exactly. They could be laughing, and you could still kind of feel foolish. But when they say I'm your friend, you feel a lot better. Yes. Two snaps for great answers on two. Ready, one, two. Okay. Now your task today is to do the following. You have learned and practiced in reading how you use your planning page to explain 
why these are experiences. We just talked about some of this right now. So now in your own words, you're explaining why this is an experience he had in the peach. Why this is an experience he had in the peach, or, or how. This and remember, I'm sorry? Like this is so, and let me rephrase that. Remember, we talked about an experience being something that you face or you deal with or you go through. Like, what is he going through in this moment? Could be an explanation of that. It's anything that's not directly in the text. It's where you're making your inference. When you're done planning that, lift up your page and look at page two underneath your clipboard. Just lift it up. Be there in two. Be there in one. Thank you, Savannah and Jade. On this page, I decided I was going to give you a bigger page because we might make some changes in your BCI box. I want you to, could you read me number two, please? Thank you, Jahari. Begin with your, B, wait, begin with your BCR test taking. Begin with? Begin writing your BCR uh. test, wait, TSA. Hmm. <laughs> Make sure if you know what my code is. Topic six, topic answer site explanation. So all I want you to do is start with our first piece of evidence. So two parts, planning on here, you explain, and then turning to the next page and just writing your first ace. Because tomorrow I'm going to teach you another skill related to the writing of the BCR. Questions, Romaro? Well, first, on, uh, so do we, can we write the topic sentence first? Absolutely. If you want to write the top sentence first on the next page, I would suggest taking it off your clipboard and setting it next to it. You may do that. Monet? Um, for this part, for the second part that we have to write now, for the um, first one, can we like put this is important, important because? Absolutely. Use sentence starters that you've learned in writing and in reading class. But I want you to show your thinking. That's what I'm looking for right now. So I don't want to discuss it anymore. I want to see what you can write on your own. Yes? How are we supposed to start this? How are you supposed to start this? No, no, to start the sentence. Start the planning right here? Yeah, I know, but if, if you just use what, like, this shows that he crossed through, I mean. So this shows yeah. that James experienced what? Food, I mean, the peach. I want you to tell me a lot more than that. And I, we even discussed that, and I gave you some clues. So just try, and whatever you write, I will talk to you about after you write, but I want you to try first. Okay, please begin. We have... We're a little short on time, so absolutely getting at least the planning page done and ro rolling into your TSA, hopefully your C&E. Okay, so this shows. Top of I'm gonna write it, I'm gonna write it and start out for you, Savannah.
We're going to work on our explain more tomorrow. Our goal today was really to select our best evidence. So if you want to start putting your BCR together and move to part two, if you're stuck, you're welcome to do that. But I love that I see so many students really trying to come up with the explanation. We're going to work for about three more minutes. Excellent focus, everyone. Come back, responsible eye. This shows that he um, he is he is leading the creatures inside, or he's he's trapped inside. Like what's happening here? He's suddenly scared because he can't get out. Different things like that. He's leading them. And you could also write another sentence starting. You could write would be James. You could just write James is experiencing surprise and excitement because an inference would be he's inside and enormous fruit. So try that. Try that sentence starter. Instead of this, you just write those three words. Okay? It sometimes can be less words and that's helpful. But do you see how like when I, when I say James is experiencing it, I just describe what he's experiencing. It's, it's making an inference about what it would be like. If you were to do that here, James is experiencing, what would you say? What was he experiencing right here? When he sees enormous size of insects, is he experiencing new friends? Yeah. The first moment? He's getting scared because he's, he's meeting um, creatures that he doesn't Topic know. Topic sentence, He doesn't know. Deja, but a quicker way of doing this in France is just saying James is experiencing. What's he experiencing? What would he experience? What would you experience? If you went into a normal size of things, it's going to be terrible. I'm scared. Yeah, he's experiencing fear because he can't get out and those big things. When I come back, I need to see how he experiences. So, topic sentence and first answer. Okay, we're going to wrap up in about one minute. Just cross it out. Just a rough draft. Okay, so if these, if these were the pieces of evidence that we found, these were the three. If it was one, two, three, I should see you taking this directly and putting it in here. You don't, you don't, in, in, definitely in order. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. So tomorrow I'm going to do that. Did you include any of them? Excellent structure. And this, is, this would be our site, like an actual quote from text we're talking about tomorrow. When I say BC, you say R, BC, R, BC. R. So I see a lot of good things. I see everyone writing a topic sentence. I see a lot of good introductory phrases. My first reason is, or the first reason is, I see a lot of people saying according to the text and starting to do some explanations. I also see that we need to make sure that we think much harder about our explain. And I also see that we need to make sure that we're thinking about Nayana, eyes are on me, our structure more. So we're going to move into that tomorrow, and I cannot wait to celebrate you as you continue to grow and turn this into a three. We're going to stop at this time. Everyone can give yourself a responsible eye, except you, for strong focus during that time. Okay. Thank you for being ap appropriate with that. Um, if you are a clipboards manager or books manager, you can begin your job. If you are not, I need you just to pack up. I need that to be done. And actually, clipboards need to be packed up, and they'll be picked up in the next 30 seconds.